Dad, did you finish work? I was going to make some omelet for dinner, but we are out of ketchup. Yeah, I was just about to leave. I forgot I had a committee meeting, so I have to work on a few things and then I'll be home. Would it be okay to have dinner after that? Sure. You want me to cook? No, I'll cook. It's okay. I want to make omelet. I don't have school tomorrow, so it's no problem. Can you pick up ketchup on your way home? Of course I can. But is my cooking that bad? Well, the last time you made omelet, it turned out to be a poached egg, right? Right. Oh, by the way, there's the movie you've been wanted to see on TV tonight. Oh, the one I have been dying to see? Let's finish everything and watch it together before we go to bed. I'll make sure I'll record it just in case. Hey, Sean, remember me? You didn't block me, did you? Are you getting this? What? Who is this? Have you forgotten already? That's cold. But I understand since I haven't seen you for seven years. This is your mother. You're kidding, right? There's no way she'd contact me now. Are you really my mother? I tried calling home, but there was no answer. I remembered I had your old cell phone from elementary school. So I just looked at the phone book to get your contact. I hope Heather is doing well, too. You've got to be kidding me. What do you want now? What? Is it so weird for a mother to worry about her son and daughter? She was three years old when I left, right? She wasn't even talking yet. But she has grown, hasn't she? I mean, she was more like Daddy, but she must look like me by now, doesn't she? Seriously, you've got to be kidding me. Do you have any idea how we felt when you saw you left? What? Well, it's true that it was a hassle to leave when your dad was around, so I left when he was at work. And you were in elementary school, and I only said bye-bye to you. You're still with that guy from back then, aren't you? You're not my mother. You should be ashamed of yourself for leaving us like that. You are a disgrace to this family. Don't contact me. I don't have time for you. I know you're busy right now. Your father had an accident and went to heaven. What? It's sad, isn't it? But you know what? Someday we'll all go to heaven, and you will have eternal rest. That's why there's nothing to be sad about. I didn't know you had that kind of faith. And yet you had an affair. I heard through a friend that the funeral is the day after tomorrow, so I texted you. I thought I'd go to the funeral. It's too much for just you and Heather to take care of the funeral, right? Are you kidding me? Don't come. I don't need your help. I'll take care of everything. Really? I thought I'd be nice to you. And you're turning down my generous offer. What a sad little boy you've grown up to be. I wonder how he raised you. You're my son, so you should act like it. Seriously, you're a joke. You've done nothing for us your whole life. And you're going to talk bad things about my dad? What kind of nerve do you have? Well, then good luck with the funeral. I'm going to the funeral anyway. I have to go get my money and my inheritance. Huh? What's that? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the inheritance from your father. And the title to the land and house where you live now. I'm supposed to get it when he's gone. What? You're going to get it? That's right. Your father promised me. He promised me that if he goes to heaven first, I will get the house and all the money. That's why I'm going to get it just like he promised. I'm going to get all of his inheritance. So after the funeral, the house will be mine too. I'll move in with my new husband. You guys have to leave. Huh? What do you mean we have to leave? Isn't it obvious? My husband doesn't want me to live with my ex-husband's children. I'm already divorced, so I'm not obligated to support you. I have no choice but to ask you to leave. 
No, seriously. Don't be silly. You left seven years ago and now you want us to leave? And you're going to get all the inheritance? That's the way it is. The distribution of inheritance is governed by the will of your father. I don't care what you say. He said he's going to give it all to me. The money, the house, everything. If you want to hate me, hate your dad who said he'd give it all to me. Hey, wait a minute. I don't care about me, but Heather is only nine years old. If we both get kicked out, what are we going to do? Where are we going to live? I don't care anything about that. I don't have custody of you. I don't have any obligation to take care of you. Why don't you just go to an institution or something? You've got to be kidding. How little sense of responsibility do you have? Why did you even give birth to us? Because your daddy wanted to have children, that's all. Now pack your things so you can leave as soon as the funeral's over. Make sure you pack your things well. Bye-bye, handsome. Sorry to contact you at this late hour of the night. If this is Sean's account, I have something important to tell you, and I need you to reply. I know your father, and I am sending you a picture as proof. Who is this? This picture is from my elementary school graduation, right? I'm tired today. I don't want any more trouble. Hold on a second, will you? My name is Nathan. I'm your grandfather. My grandfather? You mean my father's father? Yes, that's right. Nice to talk to you, Sean. I'm so sorry for your loss. I didn't get a chance to contact you until this happened. Your father gave me your contact some time ago, but I couldn't text you. And I ended up leaving it until now. No, no, wait a minute. I don't like it when you suddenly text me like this. Seriously, you're my grandfather? I was told that neither of my parents have any relatives. That's right. You're right to be skeptical. I've never met you since you were born. I opposed your parents' marriage. After a big fight with your father, I sort of kicked him out of my family. We've been almost completely separated. I didn't know that. When you were born, he contacted me with pictures, but I didn't return his calls. But he still contacted me regularly, but I never returned them. He was always seemed to be fine, so I just assumed it would happen eventually. I'm ashamed to admit that I just found out today that he was even divorced. I'm really sorry I couldn't help you at a critical time. No, that's okay. It's not your fault that they're divorced. Don't worry about it. Besides, the three of us were always laughing and having a good time, so... Thank you for saying that, Sean. So, I was wondering if we could talk about the future. Will you make me your guardian? What? Since your father is gone and you are still underage, you'll have a hard time living and go to school without a guardian. I think it would be better if I could stay as close to your life as possible. Because, as it is, and even if you have a house... It would be difficult to live just you and Heather. Well, it's true that I was wondering what I would do. Right? Children can't just live on your own. I was wondering if you would be willing to let me and my wife to be your guardians. You know, in situations where you need a guardian or a guarantor and, of course, financial assistance. What? Are you sure? Of course. I want to help you because I couldn't do anything for you until now. This is my own atonement, and I'd be very grateful if you guys would let us. We're willing to do whatever it helps. Well, thank you, but is it possible for Heather to live at your house? And if possible, I'd like you to be my guarantor to rent an apartment. What? What do you mean? What about the house you live in now? You probably don't have to pay the mortgage, right? You don't have to leave your house. Actually, I got a text from my mom today. Apparently, Dad promised her that she'd get his inheritance when he's gone. So she told me and Heather to move out of the house. Are you serious? She said she's going to live with her new husband. She said we should go to an institution or something. I honestly don't know what to do. That woman is still a jerk, even at her age. Oh, I'm sorry. She's your mother. No, I'm afraid that's exactly what I think about her, too. 
She should be ashamed of herself to send her own children away. She's not even entitled to get your father's inheritance. I looked it up on the internet, and it seems like she's not entitled to it, right? Right, she's not. She seems so sure of herself. So, if I could rely on you, I want to ask you to take care of Heather. I'll drop out of high school, rent an apartment and work, and I want Heather to go to college. You don't have to, don't worry. You guys don't have to be separated, and you don't have to quit school. Really? I really don't want to be apart from Heather either. I was fed up with school every day, but it makes me sad if I think about I have to drop out, and I wouldn't be able to see my friends anymore. I understand your feelings. I've already caused your father a lot of pain by kicking him out, and I can't forgive her for saying such unbelievable things. I'll take care of everything. Don't worry about anything. You did your best. Thanks, Grandpa. I'll make sure I keep you both together. That's the only way I can be forgiven by my son and myself. Hey, I'll be there around 1 p.m. today. Have you made arrangements to move out, or do you live there? I thought you'd call me, but you didn't. I dare you to do it yourself, but you're just a kid after all. Hey, are you ignoring me? Are you trying to go against me? Poor little child. Hey, let me in the house. How long are you going to ignore me? Don't you want to know when the moving day is due? Or are you already gone? Hello, Amanda. I'm the one who put someone in front of the entrance to not let you through. You're nothing but a thief. Huh? What are you talking about? I mean, you're not Sean, are you? Who are you? It's been a long time. I wish I'd worked harder to stop you and my son from getting married. I'm Nathan, Rick's father. Do you remember me? Huh? Don't tell me you're that hard-headed guy. That's Sean's cell phone, isn't it? Why do you have it? You're the one who screwed up my plan, remember? How could I forget? I have Sean's phone on me right now. I'll answer it for you. It's the security guard at the door. He's from the company I'm the chairman of, and he's here to help us. It seems some shameless person is trying to deceive my grandson. Huh? It's none of your business. This is about me and my children. Can you just not get involved in this? Of course it's my business. He's my grandson. You're trying to deceive him and get the money and the house. What kind of nerve do you have? Huh? I didn't deceive him. It's just that the wife gets her husband's inheritance. What's wrong with that? You're already divorced. I'm just asking to get the present Rick promised to give me long time ago. What right do you have as a non-spouse? Unless there is a will, only Sean and Heather can inherit. You, the ex-wife, have no right. Why don't you go ask your lawyer? Oh my god! Rick promised me to give me everything. That's a fine will, isn't it? The house and the inheritance are mine. When we got married in the first place, you were against it, and you wouldn't allow us to get married. That's why we're in this mess. Huh? I wouldn't have run off with another man if he was the heir to a big company. Well, I didn't think it was a good idea to marry him either, but he was going to be the next president of a big company. But he had to give up to be the next president. I guess he thought he was attractive without it. Enough. You are definitely not going to get his inheritance, not even a penny. I told you, I have my right. Give it to me already. Then show me proof that he promised you that. What? The will, the letters, the voice recorder. Show them if you have them. What? No, that was in a love letter. He wrote that he would give me anything if I go out with him before Christmas. Now the whole inheritance is mine. This house will be mine and my young husband's. Well, the letter was so gross, so I tore it up and threw it away. Oh, so you're going to keep it all to yourself because he promised, without the letter? Can you say the same thing in court? What? Well, if you don't change your mind, we'll have no choice but to file a claim for reduction of the estate and go to court. I have no proof, but I made a verbal promise before the divorce that I would get my inheritance. So I'm going to keep my inheritance and my house to myself, and I'm going to kick my kids out of here. 
That's what you're going to say in front of the judge. I have a lot of contacts with lawyers. You're going to court? How far are you going to get involved in this? I told you not to get involved. I'm Sean and Heather's grandfather, so I'm not a stranger. You're the one who divorced Rick and gave up custody, so you're a stranger. If you insist any longer, I'll sue you. It's better for you to run away while you can. No, I don't want to hear that nonsense. We are going to stay in this house. We've already sold our old house, too. My stuff is in storage. I'm in a hotel. I quit my job because of my inheritance. I've spent almost all of my money. I can't go home even if you ask me to. It doesn't matter what I say. I'm sure you'll find a way to survive. Well, can't you at least pay for the move and the first month's rent? You have money, don't you? Don't talk to me like that. You're making me sick. You really are an insane woman. We're all busy with the funeral today. I'd like to send him away peacefully. We can't afford to have a non-family member stay here. I'm just a regular morning guest. Please, please let me stay. Rick's funeral will be a family affair. Anyone who is not a member of the family, please leave. Oh, I think it's time for me to go, so if you'll excuse me. Oh, no! Please wait. Don't kick me out. My mother really wanted to get us out. She didn't have a place to move to. She was making so much noise in front of the house, so Grandpa called the police and they took her away. I was glad it was quiet by the time of the funeral. She contacted me several times after the next day, but Grandpa blocked all of them, so I never heard from her again. After that, I heard she had a fight with her husband because she didn't get her inheritance. He stole all of Mom's money and took off. To be honest, I felt happy when I thought she would be unhappy. She went after him, and now I don't know her whereabouts. I just hope she won't cause us any more trouble. I wonder what my father thought was so good about her. Grandpa says she used to be a very beautiful woman. And my father, knowing her character, was concerned about her. Apparently, he made a new will every year on his birthday. Sometime after my father's funeral, the lawyer who was in charge of the case contacted me and found out about it. I felt that my father, who was a single parent, had really taken good care of us, and in the will there was a note about Grandpa. It says Grandpa was a difficult man, but he cared about his son. He told us to contact him if we ever needed anything, and our lives took a big turn. It was a very loving environment. After the funeral, Heather and I continued to live in our original house, under the guardianship of Grandpa and Grandma. We were both allowed to go to school as before. In addition, Grandpa hired a maid to take care of our housework every day, and we are living more comfortably than before. Both Heather and I have been able to spend our lives without any difficulties.